Hi and welcome to RC Bodders and this is the second video in the series which I'm doing on the Bruder Jeep JK for conversion to RC. This is an overview video and in it I aim to cover the functions and operation of the model, have a quick look under the body at the conversion and how I did it and talk about the parts which I used. There will be a detailed series of build videos following this one I do intend to show the trailer conversion and at some point the skid loader. All of the 3D printed parts are available free for you to download from Tinkercad. The link for that is in the description. Full parts listing with UK and US affiliate links are also included in the description. If you do have any initial thoughts or questions, please feel very free to put them in the comments section below. Okay, as far as operation goes, I'm using a FlySky FS GT5 pistol grip transmitter. Normally, I've been using the FlySky or the Terma G stick radios. I think that I'm happy with this for this particular vehicle. The way which I've got it set up is that I've got steering on the steering wheel here and obviously the throttle lever underneath here. And I've also used the little wheel on the top here to control the third channel which in this case I'm using it to do the lift on the ramps on the trailer. Inside the truck nothing's been affected in terms of what you can see so you can still get the four brooder driver and passengers in there and you can still put a full load in the back. Everything is buried inside. In the front here where there was a dummy engine I've actually put in a 1300 LiPo battery. In the description, I'll have put a link to a battery of a similar size that I'm confident will fit in here, and that just plugs in with JST leads, like so. Pop that back. I'll just turn the model on for a moment, always turn the transmitter on first. You may notice no beeps. I've actually done a mod to this transmitter and all of the FlySky transmitters whereby I've removed the beep and just put an LED in its place. The reason which I did that is because the beep going off after a minute is really annoying if you're using more than one model and especially if you're making videos. Underneath the truck, I'll just take this off for a moment. Underneath the truck, I've actually installed the on-off switch in here so I'll just turn it on so we have our steering backwards throttle forward throttle I've set it so that there's no double tap into reverse and then if I just turn this end knob here and I think you can just about see it we have this going up and down obviously any other trailers might have a different function and this would still control that and that is linked to the back of the truck via a servo extension lead where I've mounted the female end of the plug into the back of the bumper. So I'll just take this off. So moving to the underneath, I've actually managed to retain the original Bruder suspension so you've got up and down as well as rocking on both the back and on the front. That has really helped me keep the parts count down and also make the conversion quicker and easier to do. As you will see, it's full four wheel drive where I've actually got a motor in each of the hubs so that the vehicle is constantly powered by four wheel drive and that actually makes it much more tractable when you're climbing up things even though these aren't massively grippy tires the fact that you've got four wheel drive compensates for a lot of that and I think that the other advantage is that because these are all linked to one speed controller it almost acts as a differential between all the wheels so you don't have trouble with your turning circle the turning circle on this is actually quite good so I think that that's probably it for the operation so let's have a quick look at what's going on inside. I'll just move that out of the way for a moment. Once you've taken all of the clips off the car once, 
you can decide what it is that you need to retain and to be quite honest retaining by these two black clips at the front and an M2 screw so I put in the back here seems to be plenty let's take that out and then in order to get the body off I first of all take out the battery Sorry, that panting in the background is the dog, it's not me. Lift it up and then just release these two at the front very carefully. Thread the battery connector through there and we're off. So I'll just quickly connect up the battery again for a moment, turning on the transmitter. And you can see here we have the steering servo actually going to the existing steering mechanism of the model. Help if I turn it on. There. And I've just left the same travel that was there on the original model as it is a steering toy. There we go. In terms of the other components, you can see that we've got the speed controller, the receiver, and various wires going to different places. I needed to make sure that I got the aerials neatly tucked away and not in the same direction as each other. So one of them is going across here and the other one is going down there. Cable ties keep the whole thing nice and neat and it's actually a very satisfying, quick and easy build to do. I think that that's probably it as far as what's going on inside. Let's just do the component list so that you can see the parts which are needed for the build. Firstly and perhaps most importantly there are the 3D printed parts which as I said a couple of moments ago which are all included in the Thingiverse files which you can freely download for yourself. I am thinking that I am prepared to print these off for people if you don't have access to a printer. My rate for printing parts is £4 an hour. These take two and a half hours to print on the Prusa. So these will be £10 plus posting and packaging to anywhere in the world. Secondly, we have the receiver. Now this transmitter actually comes with a smaller receiver, but the place where they plug in isn't quite so convenient. So this receiver here, which is the Turnergy IA6B, is really, I think, a better receiver to use with this truck. And if you do buy this radio, I think that the receiver, which does come with it, is probably better used in a different model. Motors-wise, it's the N20 geared motors, and you can use a number of different ratios. I tried it in the first place with 100 RPM, and that was a little bit slow. There are 200 RPM ones in there at the moment and I think that's kind of okay. I'm probably going to do the build using 300 so that I can do a separate compare and contrast video after the build series to see which I like better for which things. So you're going to need four of those. The next thing that you're going to need is you're going to need four M8 nuts and these are just the cheap variety that you might get from the pound shop. Really the softer the metal the better, you certainly don't want hardened steel and these are going to have to be drilled out and they're used to hold the wheels onto the motors. And a short length of 4mm copper tube, this is to go over the end of the motors like so. And in order to hold the wheels firmly onto this you're going to need some M3 grub screws, probably five or six millimeters long. I'll actually put a link in the description to a set of them which I bought from Amazon, which is kind of quite useful for lots of models. You will need two 15 mil kind of size terminal blocks, speed controller, and this is a very inexpensive 20 amp variety, which I've used in a lot of models 
and it's perfect for this truck. A couple of servo extension cables. These are probably a little bit on the long side. It's not hard to get them to the length that you actually need. Some cable ties to keep everything neat and in particular to keep the servo in place. And some high quality double sided foam tape. I think that this is the 3M variety and provided you use isopropanol, alcohol and clean both surfaces this stuff grips really well. So I've got that sticking down the servo, the speed controller as well as the receiver. Silicon wire I've got thicker and thinner of both the red and black variety so I can tell which wire is which. I like to buy my wire from component shop there'll be links in the description to the very helpful fellow there. Always good to use heat shrink when you're doing soldering and I've got a couple of sizes here I think it's two mil and two and a half mil they each shrink by 50% so for the smaller wires I use the smaller one the larger wire obviously the larger one. Not too much hardware with this model so I've got a couple of M2 nuts and M2 screws to go with them that's to hold the on off switch in position underneath and then we've got the one that we're using on the back to hold the model down and I think that that is pretty well it in terms of components. I think it's probably the lowest component count I've had on any of these conversions so I'm actually quite pleased that I've been able to utilize as much of the original model as possible. You may have noticed earlier in the build that indeed I've got two of these Jeeps and what I'm going to be doing in the conversion video is I'm going to be using this one as a template and I'm going to fully convert this right from scratch so that you can see every stage of the conversion. Right, I think it's time to wrap up. I hope that you found that interesting and you're thinking that perhaps you might like to build one of these. It would be great if you did and I would really love to hear about it. Until the next time, thank you very much for watching.